What's up YouTube family? It's Ben here with VW Family Farm and I'm coming out with a video today of beekeeping for beginners. Beekeeping supplies and what you'll need, all the options that are out there, different things that you can choose from. All right, there's a lot of people wanting to get into beekeeping. Some people are scared to get into it, not knowing what they're doing. My opinion on beekeeping, you gotta jump in both feet, just try it. See if it's for you. Uh, no, it is not for everyone, but anyone can do it. Let's get started on what all you will need just to get started into beekeeping. Here we go. All right, first off on, on beekeeping, this here is a deep brood box. You don't have to use the deep broods. I've seen people using the medium supers and just stacking two of them on there. I use a deep brood. This is all I use for the queen to lay her eggs in. And it's got 10 frames for them to store food, as far as nectar, pollen, and capped honey. In that, you will put the 10 frames. The 10 frames can vary. You've got several different options on what frames to put in there. This here is a wooden frame with a plastic foundation and it's wax coated over the top of it. I always like to roll an extra layer of wax on there. It gets the bees to draw it out faster, but if you ever have wax moth damage, <coughs> excuse me, you can just scrape that area off. And if it was a wax foundation, not plastic, you would have to cut that area out and run both sides. But since it's plastic, just scrape it off and go. You can get this in two colors. You can get it in this yellow or you can get it in black. Okay, here's a black one. You can see right here the black color, but it's already got cells drawn out on it. One thing some people say about the black foundation is when you put it up with a white, with a white egg in the back of it, because she's going to lay down in the very bottom of it, with that white egg on that black foundation you might be able to see the egg better I can see them in both of them I don't really have a preference on black versus the yellow in our honey harvesting video I said something about the cells are slanted this frame sets in here just like this and the way these bees draw it they draw it up at an angle let me get like this they draw it up at an angle about you know I don't know exactly but that way that way the, the nectar doesn't just flow out when they put it in there. So, just a tidbit of information for you. Another one you can get, this is a solid plastic foundation. You'll still want to roll extra wax on it. I always recommend rolling extra wax if they haven't drawn any out. It just gets them to draw it out faster and better. Another frame I've got here is another plastic frame, but this one is called a drone frame. If you'll see, I don't know if you can, we'll try to compare them, this one to another one, but these cell holes are a lot bigger because a drone is a much bigger bee. Of course, drone is the male bee of the hive. And the Varroa mites love to lay a, their eggs on a drone larva. So people use these drone frames to get a whole lot of drones in there They'll take that once the drones are capped. They will take this and put it in the freezer and kill all the drones, which therefore kills most of your mite population. Another option besides using the, the drone frame, which is a good option, is I bought an insect fogger from Walmart. You put mineral oil, just plain mineral oil. Then you can also mix in essential oils like uh, lemongrass oil, uh, wintergreen. There's different types of oil. You can Google that and figure out what types of oil you want to use. Uh, they control the varroa mites. So mixing those together. But uh, varroa mites is a, a big problem in the honey beehive. Uh, there's three problems that I've faced. It's the varroa mites, the wax moths, and the hive beetles. Those three can, can run a colony. 
Lastly is a, a blank frame with just a strip of wax foundation at the top and they will draw their own comb all the way down. I do like using these in a way, a couple of them in every hive. That way, if they lay a queen cell, I can cut that queen cell out of that. I can take that and put it in one of my mating nukes. On the brood boxes and any boxes, you can get them assembled, you can get them unassembled, and you can get them assembled and painted. So there's three different options depending on which option fits you best. All right, on that brood box, you'll need a top cover. These are one my brother-in-law made for me. These are a hard plastic. I mean, they're almost indestructible. You, I mean, you can bend on them and you're, you're not gonna break them. But this one right here is not available to the public. He specifically made these for me. Now you can buy a plastic top cover from different companies. But that one right there, you'll see it on most all of my beehives, those he made for me. This here is another top cover. It's called a migratory top cover. It just fits straight down and sits on top of it. If you wanted to, you could crack the sides of it like that and your bees could come out the top. Something else you'll need is a bottom board. Bottom boards come two different ways. They come a solid bottom board like this or a screen bottom board where most of the area of the bottom inside the hive is cut out. It's got a, like a, I think a number eight hardware cloth stapled down over it. And that allows for ventilation through the hive. Here in the hot climate of Arkansas, I like using a screen bottom board. And that also, uh, on the screen bottom board, if they pick off varroa mites off of each other, they can fall down through the screen and get out of the hive. All right, something else you'll need is a bee suit. This is my bee jacket. All it is is a jacket. Throw that on real quick, get into a hive. If I'm not gonna be in a hive very long or working very many, I'll use a veil. All this does is Goes over the top of your hat and just keeps them out of your face. You can wear a long sleeve shirt. Depending on how tame and gentle your bees are and when you're working them, that does play a factor on how gentle they are. Or it always has with me. But something else you'll use is gloves. They'll have some long arms on them. That way if you're wearing a button up shirt, they go over your sleeves in that area. Keep the bees from getting in your sleeves. A couple of other things. A hive tool. They are a must. This is not my favorite hive tool. I have somehow lost it. I've looked everywhere. I, I lose it quite often. I get to concentrating on the bees and I'll lay it down somewhere. I didn't see it out on the beehives this morning, but this is one option. My favorite one has a hook on the end of it to pick them up. Another thing you'll need is a smoker. You, there's a couple different options on them and options on what you put in them. You can buy pellets. You can buy several different things from a bee supplier, a bee company supplier. Um, I use pine needles. Free. All right, another thing you hear people talking about nukes. This right here is just a wooden nuke. Just built out of scrap lumber, throw it together real easy. This here is a corrugated plastic nuke. Lid flips open. There are also cardboard nukes, just depending on how many times you're gonna use them. I like the wooden ones the best. They stand up, hold up the best. There are some new nukes coming out. I haven't tried them yet. I've been looking at them. Friend of mine down the road's got one of them. He's talked pretty highly of it. I may have to try one. It's called a Pro Nuke. I just hadn't bought one yet. All right, let's move along to honey production. Everybody wants honey. Most everybody wants honey out of their beehives. There are two options on honey boxes, honey supers, a medium and a shallow. This here is a shallow. This is what I normally run. I'll put nine frames in it and it normally will pull off two to two and a half gallons 
per honey super. Now when you put on a honey super, I do recommend you using a queen excluder. Sorry, I do not have these cleaned up yet, but there are two different types of queen excluders. This one is a solid metal one. Actually, I think there's more than two, but I've got two types here. And this one has a wood frame around the edge of it. All that's doing is keeping the queen bee from being able to get through these little bitty slots in there and she can't go up into the honey super and lay eggs. Nobody wants eggs laid in their honey. Something else of feeding your bees through the winter, there's a few different options on that. This is called a frame feeder, AKA drowning feeder, cause they can drown in here really easily. Or you've got a top feeder that sits on top of your box. This is down over your beehive and your bees can come up through this one little slot right here. And when they do, they'll come up to the top and they've got that, it's got that number eight hardware cloth that they can't get into here. This is where you pour your sugar water, but they can come down to the bottom of it, however deep it is, and feed in the sugar water. That's an in hive top feeder. If you do use the wooden frames like these, there is a frame saver. If you crack, break, or if you just don't ever want to mess the ends of them up, you can slip this over the end of it, nail it on the top and on the sides, and it will save your frames. I've mainly only used these, like when I break the end of it off, I'll slap it up there, nail it together, and it saves me from having to throw that frame away. Different ways you can get your honeybees. You can order a package of honeybees that just comes with a queen. And I don't know, I think it's a few pounds, three maybe. I've never ordered it like that, of bees in a box and you dump them over into your hive. You can buy a five frame nuke. Some people will sell complete setups, bees and all included. I've done that a couple times. Or you can catch your own wild bees. I catch my own wild bees. I mainly use a flower pot swarm trap. All it is, piece of honeycomb. I'll have a straw in it with a little bit of lemongrass essential oil that attracts them to it. Mount this on a piece of plywood and you can hang it from a tree. I've seen people hang it upside down like this and the bees come in one hole. And what I've done is use spray foam and plug the other holes. I've got a video out on that, how I put them together. Um, hadn't got any on film me catching them, but they do work. I caught 17 one year using the flower pots. So I guarantee you they work. A couple more things that you will need on honey production. This is a strainer. This one right here is a 400 mesh strainer. Let's the honey drain through, but not letting the debris through. It will let tiny bits of pollen through and get into your honey. Another thing I highly recommend is a honey bucket with a valve on the bottom of it. This way you can pour into your jars of honey by just opening that valve, closing it back off, going to the next jar. Two options on the filter. Now I guess there's more than two, but I've got two. Two ways I know to do it. Set your drainer down into the bucket. Or what I've done on mine is I took an extra bucket and cut it about right here. Then your filter sets on this. You set the piece that you cut off, you set it in the top of your honey bucket and that way your filter is setting up here. Gives you more head space in your honey bucket. All right, after you've collected your honey, you've got your wax cappings that you've cut off. I always take mine back out and let the bees clean them up. This here is what your wax cappings will look like after the bees have cleaned them up. Reach down in here too much and I'm gonna probably get stung because there's bees buried up in it. This is your wax cappings after you've cut them off and put them in your strainer. I've just got them sitting here dripping into this bucket. Now I'm gonna put them over into that 
and let them clean it up outside. You can see there's already bees all over it. Just dump it off here. It's still really sticky. And I will even leave this out here. Look, there's bees already on the bottom of it. Also got a little bit of honey left in the bottom. The way I'll do that is I'll run it on its side. Oh yeah. Here's that piece I cut off. Just sits in there. Put that back on there. The reason I'm putting this in this honeycomb, the cappings, that way they don't drown or get stuck in the honey in this bucket. Then I'll leave that on its side. Let's go take a walk and uh, look at some pretty flowers. Bee food. This here's what I plant for my bees every year. It's buckwheat. This is just a white buckwheat. But I plant a bunch of it. I usually buy a 50 pound sack and I'll normally plant it twice. I let it seed out the first time and then come back over it and seed it even thicker the second. While walking to the bee yard I found a few left blackberries mm, those are sweet all right we're in the honeybee yard I do not have my suit on I'm not gonna get right up on them but I wanted to show y'all something you see that That is not bees swarming, that is called bearding. I need to get another honey super put on there, give them a little more room. Maybe open the top up a little bit and give it some ventilation, they're hot in there. I'm not sure if that's a solid bottom or a screen bottom. But even, even those are coming out a little bit. Another thing that bees love, Crepe myrtles. They're not on it right now, but they'll be on it in the morning. I don't know if they mainly just use this thing in the morning or what, but there'll be times you come out here and it sounds like a helicopter. There's so many bees all over this huge crepe myrtle. I don't, I don't prune them back very much, just because there's so much there for the bees to feed on we've got three different ones we got this white one the pink one right beside it and that red one another flower honeybees love white clover Okay, we walked over for maybe five minutes looking at the flowers. And they are just getting started. But look, there's nothing to be afraid of. There is hundreds, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of honeybees swarming all around my face. They're feeding. 
they're more worried about eating than they are stinging. They're not that scary.